Well, well, folks, it's time for another news video. And a news video that's kind of crossed with a lore video, to be honest with you. Because today we're going to be going over the Arcs of Omen. And just what in the hell is going on with Warhammer 40,000 as we push through to the start of 10th edition. Now, I do have the Arcs of Omen books here. Um, I've read through the Abaddon book. It is right here next to me, as you can see. Well, you can't see, but you can definitely hear it right next to me. And um, I've read through that one cover to cover now. I've got the others to go through. Um, the, the Lion I haven't got yet, but the others, other ones I do have. So um, I'll be reading through those as and when I can. And then when I do them, I'll be doing a new video. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. Um, the, uh, the Patreon button is also down below if you want to buy me a pint for the weekend or whatever. And also, yeah, if you're getting anything from uh, Composite Games, make sure you use the promo code Northern Exile down below. Composite Games do a lot for the channel, and uh, you can get yourself 5% off at checkout if you use that promo code. So, moving onwards and upwards. Oh, that was a, that was a hell of a read, I will say. I will say. The, the Arcs of Omen, bit of a bit of a mad one. It is strange watching Warhammer 40,000 move forwards in time. Um, I will say that. For someone who has been into it since 3rd edition, finally seeing it, I, I, I don't know what it's going to be like for the old guys for the old codgers who have been around since the, the the very start of the game you guys have got to be your heads have got to be spinning right now with what's been going on with warhammer but hey ho doesn't mean it's bad so this video is going to be split into two parts the first part is you know I, i'm going to explain what happens in the book very briefly and then we're going to get into the more interesting part because i'd like you to read the book on your own if you can or at least uh, go and watch a youtuber who is more uh, dedicated to the actual law as it is now than I am as you know I'm very much more into um, writing experiences and um, using Warhammer 40,000 as an excuse to practice your writing that's what I'm all about so I will I will normally do my own ideas and my own things I think could work in the setting and we discuss that kind of a thing um, which is why all of my law videos are mainly I talk about the actual law for a good five to ten minutes and then the rest of the 30 minute to 50 minute video is me discussing how I would write it differently if I was going to. Because people seem to enjoy that rather than just having the the uh, the law regurgitated at them verbatim. Um, I'm not very good at that. I've said this before on the channel. I'm That's not the kind of thing I want to do. I tried it once or twice. Didn't like doing it. Didn't enjoy doing it. And I'm not very good at it. If you want to do that, if you want that kind of a thing, head over to the Amber King for your experimental... Um, storybook type lore that, that is uh, completely original sometimes um, head over to Vol uh, Voldemort, Voldemort who is also really really good with his lore Oculus Imperia is really good as well there are tons and tons and tons of people um, if you want more more casual stuff Wes Hammer's good uh, Major Kill's good you know, all these other people are really good um, you know I go on out there just enter any, any, anything, 40k law into YouTube, and you will find people much better than me to discuss the law verbatim as you would read it in a book. I'm here to investigate just where the hell we might be going from here, and why Games Workshop have made certain decisions from a writing point of view. We'll be discussing in the second half of this video what works and what doesn't, which I believe a lot of you will be looking forward to, a lot more than me just telling you what happens in Arcs of Omen Abaddon. But anyway, moving on. So, let me take a sip of my coffee. It is coffee today because I'm trying to keep myself awake. Uh, my daughter has been, shall we say, a pain. So, uh, poor girl. She, she, she can't um, um, adjudicate when she's sick or not, to be fair. But uh, yeah, two hours sleep today. So, you know, busting on through, trying to record this and make sure that I'm, I'm as coherent as possible. So, <clears throat> what is happening in Arcs of Omen Abaddon? Well, not first and foremost, Vashtor. The character that we've all heard so much about coming forward in Warhammer 40,000. One of the first new guys, totally new guys, to be introduced to the hobby in quite some time. He is a character who really works within the setting. And I'll get into that a little bit later on. That sounds vague, but I will get into it in a lot more detail later on. He is the Lord of Soul Engines, like Soul Grinders and other things like that. He is the Arms Dealer of Chaos. And a guy who generally wants to map to be a match for the chaos gods themselves the arcs of omen are space hulks dragged from the warp by vashtor to be linked and then serve as abaddon the despoilers gifts 
to his minions. Why are these two together? Well, that's going to prove to be one of the main frustrating things that I'm going to go into later on. But for now, Vashtor and Abaddon are looking for shards of something to create something called the Silver Key. If that sounds frustratingly vague, that's because it is. This Silver Key leads to a vault that houses a weapon that can turn Vashtor into a Chaos God and harm the Imperium perhaps unto death. Kind of. Again, if this is too vague for your liking, blame Games Workshop. Why Abaddon just goes along with this plan, smacks of 40k writers having no clue how to write the, how to write clever motivations for their villains, but there we go. Again, if this seems frustratingly vague, well, that's because it kind of is. The rest of the galaxy responds to the Arcs of Omen, chasing down the fragments Abaddon needs, and one of these unleashes Angron. So it's one of these these uh, these uh, full arcs that's going through the galaxy is led by the by the world eaters, and of course they are led by Angron, who is on his way to do a lot do a lot more destruction and destroying and all sorts of nasty things going on. <clears throat> one re really cool thing that the Arcs of Omen tends to do going forward right now is it gives us lots of different war zones. The one one thing that's bad about things like Nakmund and Vigilus and all these other places is that there are only a, a finite amount of um, factions that are going to war in those places that, they, that you could feasibly say are there in any sort of force whatsoever. The Arcs of Omen though, they are going everywhere in the galaxy. They go to Tyranid worlds, they go to um, tomb, Necron tomb worlds, they go to the Tau Empire, they go to... they visit everybody. The Eldar, everybody. Everybody gets a chance to fight one of these Arcs. And I really, really, really like that. This is a very, very clever way that Games Workshop have spun to make sure everybody is supposed to get their time in the sun. And it looks like, aside from the Eldar, everybody might be getting their time in the sun. Hopefully. We will see. We will see. The one I haven't seen so far is the Orcs, but hopefully that, that comes up a bit later on too. But, in terms of lore, of what the Orcs of Omen actually are and what they do, it's a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a mess, but that's a good and a bad thing. So, the first good thing is boarding actions. They are a fantastic way to play the game that leans directly into what I've been saying is necessary in the hobby. An easy to teach format of the game, especially to those working in Games Workshop stores. Oh my god, that's amazing. I, I bet there are a lot of staff members who read that and went, oh, thank god, thank god. Thank God I don't have to teach Warhammer 40,000 to a 12-year-old on a 4x4 table anymore. I can just teach them boarding, ac boarding actions and we're done, right? We can just do boarding actions. It takes away all of the stratagems, all the special rules, all of the most complicated rules and boils it down into this space marine is fighting this chaos space marine. They fight. One of them dies. Hooray. Moving on, you know? Beautiful. Simple. Good. Get people into the hobby. Stop fucking around. Excellent. This game type should stretch, however, to normal battlefields too, though, so players do not mistake 40k for some kind of Space Hulk game. That's one thing that I've been seeing from a lot of people who've been going into games workshops. You know, they've been, they've been saying, look, when we, we've been trying out boarding, uh, boarding actions because there are certain cool games workshops that were given access to certain... Well, have they had the rules early, or they, or they did variations of the rules early? I did a similar thing in Games Workshop uh, when I was working as a staff member before 8th edition came out. We kind of knew what the rules were going to be for 8th edition way before they, they ever came out. And so we wrote like a one-page cheat sheet and got people up to speed with what the rules were going to be like, you know, way before the, the game came out. It was really good, it got loads of people into the hobby, and we were able to, to get it out there and make sure that everybody w was, was happy. And uh, well, Games Workshop HQ don't know, can't hurt them sort of a thing, and it really did, did well for our sales. So, um, I know other people who are doing very similar things with boarding actions, or did do certain things with boarding actions that were very similar, and it is a hit, so that is good. But the one thing that I am hearing is that a lot of the people who come in and they get a, a intro game of boarding actions instead of normal 40k, is that they tend to think that this is that, that Space Hulk, the, you know, you're in a spaceship when you're doing boarding actions, of course. They think that's the game. That's kind of dangerous. So I would like them to bring out a boarding action style game that isn't just on a Space Hulk. 
I'd like them to bring out a skirmish game that is actually on an actual battlefield, whether it be a cityscape, a jungle, death world, whatever. It's there, right? That would be a better way of doing it. But for now, boarding actions, really good. Really like that Arcs of Omens bringing that into the game. Excellent stuff. My first negative of Arcs, of the first book of Arcs of Omen, right? And here's when we're going to get into a bit of a shouty part. So bear with me whilst I have a bit of a bit of a coffee break here. Right. I am done with Abaddon the Despoiler. Abaddon is a complete mess of a character. At once he is speaking about how he is no pawn of chaos, and yet he jumps to attention at the very first opportunity of power Vashtor gives him. And Vashtor, by the way, he is a servant of chaos. Right? You don't have to be aligned to one of the chaos gods to be a servant of chaos. He is a servant of chaos. Right? Let me ask you something, guys. Has Vashtor given Abaddon any inkling that he can be trusted at all in this book? Does Abaddon really think that when Vashtor finally has whatever vague power is in the vault, that he will not just turn on him immediately or attempt to corrupt him to his side? Abaddon is an absolute moron of the highest order and is probably the most ridiculously stupid villain in any piece of media ever. I am not joking. I am not joking. He has gone from, for me, he's gone from one, one of the most irritatingly rubbish villains of fiction to being the most irritatingly dense and rubbish villain in the arcs of omen and in wider fiction in my opinion there is no reason for him to just go along with the plan of vashtor at least not without giving us some real insight into abaddon's own thoughts about turning on vashtor as soon as the final prize is in sight if we had that that piece of information if we had that little scene where abaddon's looking at vashtor going licking his lips going yeah you lead me to the power my friend and i'll kill you and take it for myself that's great we can move on it, it, it's it's two lines put that in there two lines and we can move on of course that's not in there because games workshop can't write villains they just can't they're only interested in gilliman and space marines they don't give a shit the only thing they need abaddon to do is beat his chest and wink to the camera and say i'm the bad guy do you get it yet that's all they need. They don't need anything else from him. It's lazy. It's terrible. Right? In wrestling, we would call it go away heat. There's two kinds of heat. There's heat in that you like hating a character. Right? You like hating a character. And there's go away heat. Whenever he's on the, cha on the channel, you change the fucking channel. That's Abaddon. That's Abaddon. He should be so much more... And listen, I don't have a bee in my bonnet like uh, with Abaddon like I do with the Space Wolves. I don't. I think Abaddon's a, an amazing model. He's got an amazing backstory. He just... Everything that's not Horus Heresy, he acts like a fucking moron. He is a simpleton. And he keeps getting away with it. He's a moron. He acts like a moron. He constantly makes boneheaded decisions. He's constantly... He is constantly beaten by the good champions of the setting and is literally only here because he has plot armor that says he has to be around because he is the main villain quote unquote guys please kill this guy kill him please kill him so we can get somebody new so we can get a new hot chaos champion who can actually do his job you guys know i've made the case for decimus from the night lord novels right the the, the ultimate night lord the, the guy who you know, we have an entire trilogy backstory for this guy that takes place before he's even born. That just sets up his birth. The entire Night Lord trilogy just sets up Decimus being born, right? At the end of that trilogy. The ultimate Night Lord, the ultimate uh, traitor space marine, okay? Who can see the future perfectly. That's the guy that should be War Master of Chaos. That's the guy. That's the dude. You cannot convince me otherwise. Aaron, Dems Aaron Dembski Bowden loves chaos. I know for a fact. Well, I don't know for a fact, but I'm as close, as sure as I can be that he wrote the Night Lords trilogy, right? As a fuck you to Abaddon, because Abaddon is in that novel and he looks like a bitch compared to Talos, right? And 
Talos sets up Decimus coming into the story at the end. Decimus being like like, like this ultramarine who... Sorry, not ultramarine, but you know what I mean. This amazing Night Lord who's going to unify the Legion once again. You know he was setting that up, and, he, and you know he's been waiting there, sitting on his hands, thinking, Games Workshop, let me write about this guy, because I'll make him into the new War Master of Chaos. It's all set up for him. But no, we're stuck with this fucking imbecile. Oh. The Imperium is still alive, guys. It should not be alive. It was breaking before the Great Rift, and now after the Great Rift, this clueless fucking idiot is still no closer to victory than he was before. Get rid of him. Get Abaddon in the sea. He is a complete insult to the glory that is chaos in all things. Thank you. All right, I'm done. I'm done. He, he is a moron. He is an absolute... Like, trusting Vashtor... Trusting Vashtor is probably the single dumbest thing I've ever seen a character do in 40k. And that's saying a lot. Like, listen. Listen, would you trust this guy? Well, look at the screen. If you're cooking something right now, you're cooking something, or you're at work, stop what you're doing, look at the screen. Would you trust this guy? This guy goes, uh, 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 I'd like to give you some power if you if you will help me get some power. I'll give it. I'll make sure you get it. You can have it. Right, he says that to you. Do you trust him? I'll definitely give it to you. You can have the power. No. No. Because you, you, you're not a fucking imbecile. That's why. Right? I'm done with him. Get him gone. Gone. Thank you. Right? Okay. So, moving the 40k setting forwards is a good thing. This is my next good point about the Arcs of Omen so far. And especially in book one. Especially if we are actually starting to use dates again to populate the galaxy with cool events going forwards. I'm a historian. I like dates. That's I'm, it's one of the main things I like about 40k, as in before the you know in the 41st millennium. Was well, we got dates, you know, 998 and 41 things like that. Using space hulks in the way that they are used in the Abaddon Book of Arcs of Omen, in this way is also great and gives new meaning to one of 40k's oldest actual concepts. One of the first concepts of 40k was the Space Hulks. One of the very first things that, 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 was, that was muted as being a thing in 40k, being separate from the actual uh, bog standard law, was, was a Space Hulk and what it was and, and how it acted, right? Vashtor, by the way, is an absolute winner of a character who makes complete sense within the hobby. Hear me out. I know a lot of people have been moaning about him, but hear me out. He fills an important niche, and what's more, we can tangibly see why he is so powerful and why he does not pop up a lot in the timeline until now. He is playing the long game. All other pretenders to the throne of the gods are snuffed out as their time was not ripe yet, whenever they make their move. There is a growing sense that Vashtor has seized his moment and chosen the right proxy in the seemingly clueless Abaddon, however. Not only that, but Vashtor gives important meaning to things like soul engines in the galaxy and a lord to call their own. He is the domain lord of a specific part of chaos that does not really step on anyone's toes. He is also a dark mirror to Belisarius Call, and I love that. Really good writing. Well done, Games Workshop. One of the main drawbacks to Vashtor when hearing about him for the first time is that he will just be another powerful demon. That's what I thought, anyway. And we have plenty of those already. Scarbrand, Baylacourt, right? He is actually, however, a being who is more than capable of challenging the gods as he is not a mere demon like Baylacourt or Scarbrand or an ascended champion. He represents an idea and sphere all of his own. And that is innovation run amok. Okay? It's what happens to Belisarius Call if he ever goes mental and falls to chaos. This is the kind of thing he would turn into. Each chaos god has their own power base in the warp. It is easy to see the absolute havoc Vashtor could cause to people like the Admech going forwards. And I like that a lot. He has a lot of danger about him. Also, his model, by the way, is an absolute fucking banger. Look at this shit. 
I love it. I, he looks like a, looks like some sort of sage. Not everybody needs to be sweeping or in like a metal pose. He looks like an, like, like some guy who's gonna who's just gonna make you a toaster that could, that will sort of rip your face off but as soon as it looks at you. Um, love it. I, I can see myself getting impaled on my, my hand, getting impaled on his on his spines there and on his back, but you know on his wings, but but no bother. Um, I like him because he he doesn't tread on any of the chaos gods' toes. He's not one of their demons. He's not a demon of chaos undivided. He has his own sphere of influence within the warp, right? And Wom isn't really touched by any of the other chaos gods. That's what makes him powerful, and that's what gives him the right to claim godhood eventually. And I hope he does. I hope he does. I hope his model becomes like an avatar of who, of who he eventually becomes. We need 40k in a gash. Make this guy 40k in a gash. Anyway, the final negative that I want to want to go over before I before I close out the video because I've been rambling on a little bit uh, a little bit of a while now. The vagueness of this story, so far, the Abaddon Book 1, is beyond irritating. And whilst, yes, the bad guys should not share their plans with the audience straight away, we should at least have an inkling of what is being fought over and why. If we don't, then guys, there are no stakes. And if there are no stakes, why should we care? Why should we buy the next book? You're not like me. I have to buy these books to, to cover my channel. You don't. Right? I have to say, I have to say, reading this book, I can't recommend it to any hobbyist who, who is looking to, to know what the hell is going on in Warhammer 40,000, right? Not at least until I read the next book. Once I've read the next book and the book after that, out of the four, once I, once I read the first three, then I can probably come back, and I probably will come back to Arcs of Omen Abaddon and say, yeah, buy that book. It, it, it leads into some good stuff, right? But right now, after reading this book, um, it's vague, it's irritating, and there's some cool lore in there, don't get me wrong, but the central premise of the entire thing, the silver key, and what the fuck is in that vault that Vastor is looking for, there's nothing wrong with not telling us exactly what's in it, but keeping it so vague robs the actual story of any sense and propulsion. What are we even fighting over? You, you tell us that the Imperium started to notice a pattern in the attacks of the Arcs of Omen. What pattern is it then? What are we looking at? What's happening? Where are they going? Where's the vault? What's in it? What do you think's in it? Is anyone even guessing what's going on? Like it's a weak start if, if I was if, if this was a novel right if this was a, a, a three part novel and this was the first opening act I would be I wouldn't be tearing it to shreds but I'd be going back to the author and saying listen um, I I love this genre and I'm not confused right I kind of get what's going on but I don't care I don't care because you've not told me why I should you've not told me why I should You've told me that, that in this vault there is something that could make Vashtor a god and bring the Imperium some uh, major harm. I mean, the Black Legion could give the, could, could, could give the Imperium major harm. Baylor could give the Imperium major harm. Fucking Angron could give the Imperium major harm. And he's already out there kicking ass. What is it? What is it? What are we looking at? What are we looking at here? Give us a clue. Give us a hint. The central thesis of your entire story at the moment after Abaddon, book one, doesn't fucking work. It doesn't work. Right? I tend to think sometimes Games Workshop's writers and 40k itself likes to sniff its own farts. I do think, especially with the Horus Heresy books, Mac from Out Outer Circle will tell you, we've had this conversation several times, right? There are certain books in the Horus Heresy that are so full of meaningless adjectives because they're trying to make the story far bigger than what it actually is, then it gets irritating to the reader. You start reading it thinking, dude, you're not this clever. Stop using big words that you don't know what they mean. Stop it. I swear to God, sometimes in the Horus Heresy, some words, some adjectives are just made up. I, right? Part of my living is looking over books, looking over novels, proofreading, essays and novels. There are certain words in the Horus Heresy book series 
that I'm 99% sure are just fucking made up. They don't exist. Right? They don't exist. And every one of the writers does it. Every single one of them does it. And it's always when they're describing some sort of massive battle in space or some sort of, you know, uh, dealing with the Emperor or whatever. It gets, it gets irritating. Because you think that they, they think that they're smarter than you. And that's not a good feeling to have when you're reading a book. All right? Let alone something as dense as 40k. Or 30k at the time. Okay? I'm getting this sense with the Abaddon Book of Arcs of Omen sometimes. I really am. And that's a shame. That's a real shame. Anyway, what do you think of book one? Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you enjoy it? Are you enjoying the lore so far? Have I been too harsh in it? Am I going to be very happy with the next books? Um, I'm going to read the next one over the weekend and I'll have another video for you on Tuesday or Wednesday next week on the Arcs of Omen as we move forwards. Sorry this one took a bit of a time, but I needed to wait for the book to get here so I could read it and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to cover this. It's a big monumentous thing. I didn't want to cover it without reading it myself. So, love you all. I will speak to you tomorrow for some more Hobby Nightmares. Have a wonderful rest of your day. See you soon. Bye.